I think if I'm going to be trapped with a living author, it has to be someone whose writing I really admire, but also someone I think would be really good company and someone I think would actually be a nice person to be stuck in a lift with for a long time. And um, quite a few years ago, I saw Robert Hass in Wellington at the Writers' Festival and I really love some of his poetry. It's incredibly beautiful and spiritual and soulful and he has such amazing metaphors and it's so deeply emotional and lyrical. I just love those poems that seem to really, um, what would the word be? They seem to just really convey something of the meaning of life and what's really worthwhile and the suffering that people go through as well, the important things of life. And he seemed such, such a nice person. Well, I, I found that quite a, a strange question because if I was in the afterlife, it would be such an amazing place finding out everything about the afterlife that I probably wouldn't be looking for another writer because <laughs> I'd be exploring and finding out and if I really wanted to find out I'd be asking God, you know. Um, but on a personal level, so I'm not really answering your question, but if I was in the afterlife I'd want to talk to my father who's passed away and because he died very suddenly and we never got to say goodbye and and I'd want to talk to my grandparents and my great grandparents who who died when I was mostly they died when I was very young and I couldn't communicate with them because I couldn't speak Chinese and I'm assuming that in the afterlife we'd be able to communicate you see so uh, there'd be so many people as well as so many experiences that I'd be going for something much more personal. You know, I, there's a lot of movies I haven't seen yet. <laughs> I've been so busy. But the, of the ones I've seen, or uh, the one that I liked the best, where I read both the novel and saw the movie would be The English Patient because uh, they're quite different things and I remember hearing Michael Ondaje speaking in, in Wellington and he said he was happy with it. it they were different things because you can't uh, do the same thing in a movie as, as a novel but it captured the spirit of of what he wanted, even though it was only a, a part of it. And I found the movie very beautiful and very poetic and it, it captured that wonderful spirit of the novel. So I thought that was pretty good. The word happiness is, is a, quite a misused or misunderstood word, something like love, you know. People can mean such different things and I don't think you can find happiness by looking for it. Uh, and maybe I wouldn't use that word because um, life can be very complicated. It can be at times very stressful and difficult. But I think to have some kind of peace and contentedness or something like that, or to feel like your, wife's, your life is worthwhile, um, I really like to be with people I can really relax with, feel at home with, people I love and who love me and just accept me the way I am, being with my family, you know, with my husband and my son and doing what you think you need to do in this life, you know. So for me, if I can 
be making some progress in my writing, that's a good thing. And if I can just be doing small things in my life that uh, some do some kind of good, you know, just little things. Being there for people and caring for people and just doing whatever you need to do and having a bit of fun, uh, lots of laughter and fooling around and some adventures and some spontaneity. A couple of years ago I went to a symphony orchestra concert in Wellington and a couple of rows in front there was a very elderly couple sitting there waiting for the concert to start and they were sharing the community newspaper and they were sitting next to each other and they each held one side of the newspaper together and one of them was pointing to something in it, I don't know what it was, so gently and so tenderly and they were talking to each other and listening to each other and they had obviously been together for such a long time and it was so intimate and so gentle I thought that's happiness. A few things I guess occupy my thoughts at the moment. One would be because I'm, I'm newly married and uh, so I'm I'm really enjoying being with my husband. We, we, our families go back a very long way. So although we haven't been married very long, it feels like we've been together forever. And uh, it's lovely being with him. And I'm really wanting to get on to my writing because I've had a lot of disruption with moving to Australia and organising all my things here in New Zealand and sorting things over there and that's uh, interrupted my writing and I'm really looking forward to getting into the next books. My English teacher at high school, I think it was in the fourth form, um, it could have been the third form, but I think it was the fourth form. It was Mr Exeter at Colenso High School in Napier. He gave me Alice Do Cry to read, and I had never read anything like it before, and it really opened my eyes to literature because it was nothing like I'd ever read. It was so poetic and haunting and powerful and really, really strong. And I suddenly realised there was writing like this, you know? So that was hugely significant to me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.